Hey everybody, welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. I'm John Martin. And I'm Dean Reverman. Dean, we have elderly parents. Yes, um, I do. And, uh, you know, you reach this point where you start being concerned about their well-being. Mm-hmm. You start thinking a little bit about the future yep. uh, and where they might end up having to, to stay mm-hmm. at some point in their lives. Uh, I know I'm that in that place with my mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, obviously over the last year, things got a little scary yeah. in the world of senior living, nursing homes, Absolutely. assisted living, uh, the places where, you know, our, our elderly go to to yeah. stay and live. And uh, COVID-19 obviously changed the game there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so Hard. that's, that's kind of going to be a little part of our topic today is mm-hmm. uh, we're going to dive into the technology in the senior living world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Lever Stewart with us from AccuShield. He's going to tell us a little bit about what they're doing to help. Um, one with you know what's going on with COVID, with keeping people safe and making mm-hmm. sure that uh, only the right kind of people are getting in there, uh, as well as you know uh, a little bit more about the technology involved that's helping keep seniors not just safe but also happy and connected. Yeah, uh, so important, right? Is. I mean, think about it. You lived all your life. You get to your golden years, and then a pandemic hits. Yeah. I mean, oh my yeah, gosh! And one that's as restrictive and just devastating as this one has been so yeah we need to talk about it we need to talk about some technology that we can put in there and make things a little bit better for that definitely so yeah. we're going to get a little bit into that check-in process we're going to talk about some of the ways the technology is impacting senior care around maybe loneliness and isolation mm-hmm. um, virtual visits telemedicine stuff that's you know kind of been ramping up especially over the last oh, yeah. year uh, all that as well as our usual value to the var and what's tech tech connecting with us it's time to plug in and get connected <laughs> Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. It's time to get connected. All right. So as I mentioned, our guest today is Lever Stewart. Lever is the COO of AccuShield. Um, Lever, I, w- I want you to go ahead and start off by telling us, you know, a little bit, of, one, about yourself, your background, how you ended up at AccuShield, and then explain maybe a little bit about what AccuShield does and especially their role in the senior living space. Sure. Uh, and, you know, thanks, John and Dean, for having me join you. Um I, I kind of came about, uh, I am one of the founders as well of AccuShield, and it was kind of an odd way that I ended up in the business. I'm actually a recovering attorney, and um, I try to make my recovery meetings faithfully. Um, the the Because of that, when I got out of private practice, I had a stint as I kind of became more, you know, entrepreneurial bent where I owned a legal support services company. And I and so I had a background. Part of what that company did was uh, criminal background checks, basically legal due diligence related to putting together, call it profile reports of either individuals or companies and the, you know, and the principles behind the companies. So a lot of that is what's called public records research. And um, so I got interested with my, you know, my two other partners in AccuShield uh when we started to look at okay here you have a senior living community and you have a very vulnerable population of of folks you know more elderly folks in there a lot of open doors um there are a lot of drugs uh that are easily available um for theft you've also got uh, literally seniors living in these communities that have all of their cash and their jewelry and credit cards So you have theft, you have the issue that they uh, can be taken advantage of from a fiduciary standpoint. So I started to think about, you got all these visitors coming in and the way they used to kind of manage it was a good old fashioned sign in logbook. And I don't know if you, you know, a lot of people can relate to that. If you have any relatives, you walk into their senior living community, if they live there and there's this logbook sitting there and you're supposed to sign it and say who you are and who you're there to see. A lot of people just walk by it. Don't sign in. A lot of people, uh, the concierge who sits at the front desk is busy and can't really manage that. And so ultimately, um, what we wanted to do was say, how can you have a better way to kind of understand who's coming in your community, which is a very open community, have it in an organizable fashion, and especially for safety and security. What about these, you know, these third-party caregivers, which, by the way, provide 
almost 40% of the care in senior living communities, not the staff in the community, but outside caregivers hired by the resident, hired by the resident's family to come in and help provide care, whether it's simple home care, or it could be all the way to hospice and end of life situations. Well, how do you know anything about these people? And the community has a liability there mm -hmm. because they're working on their property. So that kind of led to the concept of providing a visitor management system in senior living. Um, so we, we developed and released a digital sign-in system, an easy way that when someone comes in, they can sign in, give a, give a reason as to why they're there and who they're seeing. And then the community could have easily retrievable and manageable information in a dashboard to help with care. So they, because a lot of the times they don't even know, well, gosh, this resident's hiring all this outside care. We didn't even know. It helps in caring for the resident, helps in um, engagement for the resident. Um, wow, this resident never has any visitors. We, we have what we call the love meter where, you know, maybe we ought to go pay it a little more attention to them. No wonder they're not very happy. No one's visiting them. It's easy now to see activity. Um, that did kind of change with the pandemic. And uh, with the pandemic, we quickly pivoted. OK, there is a new need. People need to sign in and get health screened. So we quickly added to our system the ability to answer customizable health screen questions, a touchless integrated thermometer to take your temperature when you sign in. And now you can also use this for your own staff because, you know, especially and still to this point right now, senior living communities are just finding ways to start reopening. They've really been in a shutdown state in terms mm -hmm. of people coming in. So. Mm -hmm. We can now add it to our system. You can health screen staff. You can health screen caregivers or visitors coming in. Yeah, yeah that's really good stuff, Lever. And, and your your perspective on it is very unique. Uh, coming out of the legal field, I, I I like the optics that you're bringing to the whole equation, and I think that's obviously very important uh, to note because I don't think people realize the vulnerability of this population mm -hmm. and how they can be taken advantage of. I mean, I guess we hear stories from time to time, but really not until you think about right. kind of the atmosphere, what it it's all about the workers that are there. Just vulnerability is the word that just keep, keeps coming back to me. You know, that was pre-COVID-19. Right. Now, right. even worse uh, in the sense that now we're dealing with a pandemic. So that legal aspect's pretty interesting. Yeah. What I think is kind of interesting here, too, is that it's possible as much as, you know, we don't ever want to think about this as being a good thing that COVID happened. But, you know, some good innovation has come out of it. We've yeah, acknowledged right. that before. And this mm -hmm. is one of those things where I feel like hopefully some of what was put in place here is the same kind of stuff that once the pandemic's over, you keep in place and still utilize to, to help your, these Absolutely. people out from these other things they were vulnerable with. Yeah. Whether it was, you know, potentially someone coming in and stealing something, mm -hmm. someone coming in that shouldn't be there, uh, you know, mm -hmm. or, or making sure that the right kind of people were there when they should be or they're getting visited enough. We'll talk a little bit more about that, too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I did want to talk about a couple of the little stats around, you yeah. know, senior living and, and nursing homes. Um, so, you know, I found an article from, I think is the, the um, NAM.edu that um, talked about, according to a New York Times database, nursing homes account for 8% of cases and 41% of COVID-19 related deaths nationwide. And I think that was even from a few months back. Mm -hmm. So it's, it probably is even worse now. Although mm -hmm. I, I would hope that when before this second wave came in, you know, that that we got a little more diligent about who we did let in there. Maybe mm -hmm. that's, you know, I, I feel like we're not hearing about quite as much about nursing homes being hit quite as hard now. Mm -hmm. um, but even so, Devastating statistic, you know, yeah. and, and, oh, absolutely. and highly unfortunate, which has obviously precipitated the need for making sure that the right kind of people are coming in yep. or not able to come in. Yep. So, Lever, you kind of already mentioned this idea, you know, that how you had to kind of pivot your business a little bit to cope with COVID-19 uh, and, and deal with, with what changed. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about... Um, those check-ins and that screening, uh, you know, uh, situation. And you mentioned, obviously you've got like a temperature solution. That's a touchless solution, which I love that because I feel like, you know, if you have to pick up a thermometer and aim it at your head or someone else has to pick it up and aim it at your head, that's just a touch point that could still be problematic as right. well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also wanted to, t to tackle the other concern here, which is we're starting to hear a lot more guidance and a lot more coming out that um, temperature screenings probably aren't really super useful in 
preventing the potential spread of COVID. Not saying it's not beneficial, not saying you should. It's not do the it. only thing, right? right? I but mean, you can't hang thing. your hat on just temperature checking. And, oh, exactly. okay. You know, I don't have a temperature, so good to go. Right. So, what's, this, what's the stat we saw there? It's like, yeah, the New England Journal of Medicine study found only 13% of COVID patients reported a fever during the course of their illness. Wow. That is strikingly small. That is striking. It's because like 80% I, of those that are yeah, contagious I, aren't. I, I yeah. feel like when this whole thing started, we would like it was always the thing was like, if you got a fever, that's it. Yeah. You've got it. You know, yeah. be, watch out for that fever. Right. But now we know that that is not necessarily a high indicator or that most of the people who can have it and spread it aren't necessarily getting fevers. So you need a more robust solution. Exactly. Yeah. So Weaver, from your perspective, you know, how, how are you tackling that? I'm sure you've probably got some questions about that, about, hey, you know, we're not really sure we want to even care about temperature checks anymore, right. but obviously they, right. they still want to do some level of screening. That's, that still is important whether sure. you're doing the temp check or not. So how are you tackling that particular question? No, I, mean, I think it's a, I think it's a great question. And some people are more, you know, cognizant than others. But as you say, you know, answering health screen questions and taking a temperature is a preventative measure, but it's not, it, you know, it, it's not the end all. Right. Um, I, it's it's almost in two steps. I feel like originally senior living communities are like, we just have to take steps, period. What's the best thing that we can do? Well, one of the things that we can do is, you know, ask questions. Hopefully people are, you know, concerned enough about safety that they're going to be honest in answering them. And that attacks a bit of, you know, that adds value to the temperature taking because the temperature by itself, as you say, is not a terribly you know, great indicator of whether you have COVID or not. So we're going to ask these health screen questions. Then we're also going to take a temperature and between the two of them, be able to react if they don't pass it. The reality in the next stage, as I call it, that I think where senior living is going, as well as a lot of other, you know, industry verticals that need to be concerned about health is what I would call more infection prevention programs. Um, and what that means is with the release of the vaccine, I think you are now starting to highlight a new credential that someone mm -hmm. needs to be able to show in order to be eligible to enter, in this case, a senior living community. And it's now a health screening credential. You know, how can I efficiently collect proof that you've been vaccinated? Not just the first shot, but the second shot. How can I collect proof that if you have chosen not to be vaccinated, what's your most recent COVID clearance test? Uh, how can I efficiently remind you if you want to come in that your test, you need to be retested if you haven't been vaccinated? How can I collect now TB clearance? Because that's an issue in senior living. Uh, how can I collect that you have gotten your annual influenza shot? Um, so it's that that I think is the next stage. Mm -hmm. The technology has got some tremendous solutions because this is a massive just data management issue. And how, how do you efficiently collect it? How are you able to monitor it? How are you able to say, all right, these you know 150 people that are coming in regularly, I can go on my dashboard and quickly see they've turned in their health screen credentials. Now when they sign in, they can, you know, whether they do or don't, it's let's pretend it's post pandemic. You're not asking health screening questions anymore. You're not taking a temperature every time. Society's kind of a little back to normal, but you don't want them to come in unless their health screen credentials are valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and keep in mind that's that's front of house and back of house. Yep. I mean, it, it's equally important to get the staff, which you know, in solutions like this, uh, into this process as well. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's. Um, I, I love the fact that you're kind of pointing out this idea that. Look, there's not just COVID to worry about when you're stepping into a facility like this and you're exposing Absolutely. yourself to right. the elderly. You know, there's, as you mentioned, TB, influenza. Uh, you know, there's any myriad of different ways that infections can occur. And, you know, this is as vulnerable of a population as it pos pop possibly can get. Mm -hmm. And one where when something happens, spread can be so rampant and so quick and so dangerous. So, yeah, you know, I, I think we're talking, you know, something that, again— this is the future. You know, this isn't just a, hey, we're doing this right now because we have to, but a, we need to do this down the road. I like the idea, too. I didn't even really thought of the, the whole vaccination thing, which I know, you know, right now there's still a lot of discussion about do we require this in certain settings or not. You know, I, I feel like there's I, – I, I think for the most part, you know, most nursing homes and senior care facilities – required flu shots from their staff. I'd say the mm -hmm. majority of them probably right. did before, and most healthcare settings do. I know a lot of them are still debating that about the COVID thing, but I, let's be honest, we've, we've reached this point where we know that we're probably dealing with an endemic soon now where 
this will just be with us mm-hmm. for a long time, and we will be getting regular shots probably every year. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I think we've kind of acknowledged that's probably what's going to happen here. So I can't imagine you're not going to reach a point where you're going to be asking that staff, like, hey, every year you got to get your booster shot, you've got to, you know, and you've got to be able to, to verify that it's that time before you're allowed to come back in again. Is is that kind of what you're expecting in the future? Yeah, I think so. And it, it's it's complicated now, too, by the fact that, you know, the current vaccines are being issued under an emergency use authorization. They don't have what you would call final FDA clearance. So there's a much bigger argument of people saying, well, I don't want to get vaccinated until it has, for example, full FDA clearance. And that's kind of the endemic stage. I think you will get to the point where just like, you know, public schools require that, you know, you've had certain vaccinations, um, you know, before you can attend or, uh, you know, those are going to be easier and more acceptable. But right now you have to have some flexibility because there's a high, as you know, there's a high percent of people who've already said, I don't want to get vaccinated until they know more about it. Mm. Uh, So how can they come in? Well, you've got to be able to Okay, what's your most recent clearance test and and set the standards and and it's complicated. You say, well, you have to have a clearance test within the last 72 hours. Well, what happens if you got infected within those last 72 hours? Mm -hmm. You you know, it gets complicated. So um, I I do think that the uh, having a technology allows you to set standards that you can create on your own that can be dependent upon your industry, like senior living, which is a very high concern. And um, that flexibility is important in the technological solution. Yeah, and as resellers that are listening to this and technologists, you know, it's important for us all to realize that these solutions are out there and they're very important. Mm-hmm. I think no, no better highlight than the senior living community highlighting the needs for visitor management type of solutions like this. And they're out there they're not that expensive um, it, it, to begin with. And it, I also love the flexibility. And I like where you're going with it, Lever, because, yes, you can use it to address the current need that is in the pandemic. But there are broader needs around visitor p- management or just people management. You know, mm-hmm. they're coming into facilities like this and others. There are other applications for this, obviously, in other verticals and other uh, industries and stuff like that. But really important to understand this type of technology and, and how it can be implemented. Yeah. Not that difficult. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's um, let's pivot a little bit and talk about some other technology that's impacting senior care right now. Um, mm-hmm. at, at Lever, you you kind of mentioned a couple of these up front when you were kind of talking about the, you know, what AccuShield does and kind of, you know, wh- wh- what some other applications that you've been diving into. So I know, you know, when I was doing some reading and research about this and, you know, you, we hear, you, you, if, especially if you know somebody in senior care or if you've got a relative that is in a nursing home, that the, the isolation and the loneliness that can sometimes come with that for seniors is, is a huge impact on their health, their well-being, their happiness. Mm-hmm. And I love that when I was reading about, about your technology, that part of what you incorporate into the visitor management piece beyond you know COVID is this idea of ensuring that uh, that we're making sure that these people are you know are 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 being contacted and being you know someone's talking to them even if they don't have right. family that's visiting on a regular basis that you know like hey has has someone visited this person often enough when was the last time someone came and visited this person do we need to to have someone maybe go in and just spend some time sit down with them talk with them whether it's a staffer or a volunteer or something. Uh, you know, or maybe they don't have family at all. So talk to us a little bit about how this technology and, and visitor management is impacting, you know, the lives and the well-being of seniors outside of anything related to disease or infection. Right. The kind of when you look at, as you say, addressing, you know, the concern, how can you make sure that a senior living in a senior living community is just living a really good life? through communication with family, through, you know, activities in the community, whatever it is, kind of break it into two categories. There's the the aspect of people coming in to either care or visit for them. And that's where we're focused, the visitor management side. And then, frankly, there's also just the focus inside the community. How do they get their arms around all this different care that is being provided? And how is it effectively communicated to the family? Uh, whether it's, as they call clinical, which is strict medical care. And there are lots of technology companies out there that have what are called clinical programs that have to do with how can we share appropriately 
um, you know, uh, medical care so that this doctor knows that this doctor is doing something different or otherwise. So it, it, one of those engage, they, they call outside of clinical, the engagement for the resident, they tend to call them family engagement tools. Mm -hmm. And those clinical uh, tools, those family engagement tools are kind of internal to the community. Um, so we pair with them. There are integrations with systems. Uh, we're focused like they are holistically. How can, for example, the caretaker, how can you as the caretaker of your mom in a community somehow be on top of what's all the care that she is receiving? How engaged is, is she in the community? Is she going to yoga classes? Is she getting out of her room or is she totally isolated? Who all is visiting mom? I know I go visit mom, but is anybody else visiting mom? And technology has allowed for new tools to create that engagement. Um, you know, an example, you know, on our visitor management side, we have a mobile app that uh, called Connect, where uh, if you are authorized, and of course you need to be legal off, legally authorized, whether as a guardian or whether the, you know, the senior, and I'm just going to call her mom, uh, whether mom has said, I want my daughter, I authorize my daughter to be able to kind of see the comings and goings of caregivers that we've hired and visitors that see me. Well, now you can just sign on your mobile app, your Connect app. I want to see if anybody's visited mom this week, because if not, I want to go see her. Are friends going and seeing her? Um, it, you know, it's a way to monitor that. Then you tie it internally. Well, I want to go to a, a program, hopefully a single program, that can also tell me real quickly, and I can look at it on my cell phone, did mom go to classes today? Did she go to yoga? Is she getting out of her room? Uh, is she eating all three meals a day that the community is pretty, is she going to the dining room? Things like that. So that you feel more connected and you have more knowledge of how your mom is doing. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's interesting. And, and as you were speaking, Lever, I was thinking about, you know, the trends in population and, and some of the, you know, what we need to be aware of as, again, technologists, as, as, as it relates to the technology in this space. I mean, I think that, again, COVID has put a spotlight on senior living and the need for technology within the space maybe not the most technologically advanced type of a place when you walked into a senior center before, um, you know, because just to your point, I mean, I was reading surveys where, you know, Wi-Fi was not really a thing in right, a lot of senior, right. believe it or not, you know, that's, that wasn't a thing. So, so you're right. starting to see an increased need or, or implementation of just basic wireless networking and, yeah. and some of those technologies. So when we think about it as resellers of technology, there's an obligation and an opportunity here to get out in front of this. When you think about the population and how our population continues to age here in the U.S., it's actually a global thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be an ongoing need. Senior living centers will, it's, it's not an opportunity that's going away. There's going to be demand, to Lever's point, I think, you know, obviously it's, the, it's those family members, those that are the loved ones who are interested to know what is going on uh, that is going to drive technology adaptation within the space as well. And I think that there's, there's there, again, there's an obligation and an opportunity here for us as technologists to do that. I read another statistic that said that of senior living centers, 56% don't have a concrete plan of how to address some of these really basic technology uh, needs, right. you know, from from check-in, like we, we've been talking about here, to Wi-Fi, to other things. So there's a need in the marketplace to, and I, and I like the fact that the spotlight is, is shown on it. I don't like why it's being shown on the on the senior uh, community, but I, you know, I think to your point, you know, there's an opportunity here to, to address the technological needs of that community. Yeah. You know, I, I think about uh, my mother's heading that direction at some point. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's not anytime super soon, but I know it's going to happen at some point. And, I, and I'm thinking the same thing where it occurs to me, and I don't say this to be flippant in any way, but I kind of approach it the same way I approach child care and daycare for my son, you know. Uh, when when we were looking for daycare centers for him, mm -hmm. I paid attention to what kind of technology do they offer for sure. me to keep track of what he's what he's doing every Absolutely. day. Absolutely, cameras in the room, yeah, an app that I can room. see. Yep. You know, exactly. did he have lunch? Oh yeah, yep. no, like, he kicked a kid over here. What? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> you know, they're they are sending pictures. They're letting you know what they've been up to. If right. They're playing games. Like, I love that kind of interactive mm-hmm. aspect. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like we should expect the same thing for our the senior members of our family. Like, I, I don't want to think that I'm just, you know, putting her somewhere where, well, you know, other than me giving her a call from time to time right. and checking in on her, yeah. I have no idea what she's up to or if she's happy or if she's doing fun, cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, so uh, it's it's a it's a weird correlation. I mean, it's I, you know people have made the correlation before that beginning of life and end of life is mm-hmm. very similar in a right. lot of ways, <laughs> uh, and I think this is an example of that. But yeah, I, I I have to think that that kind of technology is going to give a lot of people a leg up when it comes time. As you mentioned, the the, the aging population is getting bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. It's going to be us someday too, and I know I'm going to want all the the coolest perks and features when I get to that point. You know, yeah. I'm hoping I'm still relatively tech savvy, and you know, yeah. if I have to go be somewhere where I can't have Wi Fi. Well, like, no, I already know, you know what's taking care of you. It's the disinfectant robot. <laughs> That's We've true. had this conversation many a times. <laughs> That's true. There's a, a recurring <laughs> gag that I'm a germaphobe yeah. on this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> but well, uh, Lever, let's well, talk. I, a, oh, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, Dean, to your point about technology and advancement, I, I agree. It's sad that the pandemic has kind of, the reality is it has pushed. I think senior living and some other industries, we have got to start embracing technology more to come up with a manageable solution. And, um, you know, we've been at this for seven years in senior living, and it's been fascinating to see in our early days, it was a real struggle. It was a, to your initial point, Dean, there were a lot of senior living communities that wanted, for example, a digital visitor management system, but their Wi-Fi was so poor because yeah. we're a cloud-based system. you you got to have internet connectivity. Um, there are privacy law reasons why you don't want that data stored on a kiosk sitting on a desk. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like a dumb terminal. It transfers the data immediately to a cloud-based HIPAA privacy law compliant database. Well, if your internet's bad, it's not going to work well. And so it's been fascinating to see how senior living communities, especially post pandemic, have upped their game in terms of internet connectivity. And I think it's a real opportunity for the people who provide technology connection solutions, you know, that are, you know, uh, it's a real opportunity that we see a lot of increased investment in senior living in things like better internet connectivity. Yeah. And some of the basic things that we've been talking about here and the solution, obviously, we were talking with the AccuShield. I mean, you know, easy to implement type of a thing. Yeah. I think the other important piece of technology here, too, to think about is, and especially for our VARs, they're thinking about, hey, what do I need to talk about when I'm approaching these these customers, is virtual visits, Mm -hmm. telemedicine. Yeah. um, Something we all became very familiar with over the last year when a lot of doctors were basically saying, like, hey, don't come in, which, again, you know, yes, we'll go back to germaphobe John. I made a point out of not going in (laughs) if I didn't have to, you know. Like yeah. if you can tell me, hey, I can I can meet with my doctor and get what I need. Yeah, but honestly, there's a certain amount of convenience with telehealth right. anyway. Exactly. I mean, I don't have to drive to my you know doctor's right. appointment and stuff like that. But that's yeah. super important again for the elderly, where you're oh, trying yeah. to you know make you're minimizing their risk of being out and about. You're minimizing mm-hmm. any chance for falls. You don't yep. have to you know load some people on a bus or something to take them somewhere mm-hmm. where you can bring the care to them in a sense by having technology on hand where you can have a virtual visit with their doctor. Mm-hmm. I know there was somebody we were working with, I believe. On a, a marketing campaign in the last year, that had the kind of technology where you know you could even integrate medical devices in with it. So yeah, if you're using right. a stethoscope or some mm-hmm. other kind of medical device, it could be integrated with this technology where the readings that you got were sent back through the app and through the technology, mm-hmm. so that the provider could see all of this data. You, you'd have someone on the staff on hand that was doing these tests, but then an actual doctor was getting this information and you know, making decisions based on it or deciding if they needed to, you know, actually come in or, you know, be seen in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the kind of technology that has to be a a broader part of this picture as we move forward, thinking about, hey, how do we, again, keep this population safe, Mm -hmm. keep them happy, but also give them all the care they need, that clinical type care, mental health care, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Lever, any other thoughts on that or any other kind of technology you think are really impacting senior living right now? Yeah, the as you say, telemedicine feeds right into this entire concept of of a better clinical database where you can go to one location to get a comprehensive picture of the care being provided to a senior. And there's been a lot of advancements in in these clinical programs, how they aggregate 
all of this disparate information. You know, what about your medical records from the past? How can they be considered by a doctor now providing you advice through telemedicine? If it's telemedicine, can that, you know, much more rapidly be put in a central database? So now you have a holistic picture. We know the third party care coming in, helping the senior. We know the outside medical care that they've gotten. We know the telemedicine net care that they've now gotten. Um, you know, that's that's a picture that you've got to have a way to capture all that different type of medical information. So you have the visitor management side. What about the caregivers coming in? What about, mm -hmm. you know, the fact the resident called the doctor or hospice is now coming in? Um, and then, you know, be able to look in one easy to read database that gives you a holistic picture. Mm -hmm. um, that's been that's been the big challenge. I think I, I think you guys know for years people have talked about, uh, you know, we have all this technology and advancement. Why is it so hard to, you know, that when you go and see a doctor, you go, well, I got to bring this medical record from this other yeah. you know, visit and I got to don't you have these records? And no, we didn't know that you got hospitalized for this three years ago. We have to go to that hospital to get it. Yeah. It, it, people are sort of, why is this so hard? Yeah. And I think there's been a lot of advancements focused in senior living on pulling all of this, you know, medical record together in, in a single database that's more user friendly. Yeah. Now that's a, that's a broad problem with healthcare in general that I think we've been tackling right. for years. And yeah. I wish I could say there was an end in sight and we have, we have a I got this to, manila but... folder with my information. <laughs> in it. it almost is. I, I, I hate to say that, but I, I do feel like you get to that point where you almost feel like you have to carry around all your information yeah, yourself. And right. that should not be the case. Yeah, I know. We are right? too right. far advanced of a society to still have to be that reliant on, on everyone t keeping track of their own care. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Lever, let's, let's help some of our resellers connect the dots here as well on this technology. Cause I can imagine some of them are sitting back saying, you know what? I don't, I don't play in healthcare. I don't play in senior li living care, but this, uh, the solution that we're talking about at, at the head end here, the visitor management type of, uh, of a solution, mm -hmm. it can be implemented. It has broader reach than just obviously in senior living care. It can be used back a house. So if we have resellers that are in retail or hospitality, you can use this same solution. It's a more robust solution for employees that are coming into a restaurant, that are coming into a retail, that are coming into a manufacturing yeah. space. You can use this technology. So wherever you're putting technology today, there, I guarantee you there's an application because there's probably people around and people need to be managed. Uh, and, and this is a great solution for that. So you can dip your toe by helping your current customers with this type of solution. And then, oh, by the way, visit the senior living center down the road from them. And you there, there's a door opener as well once you get comfortable with the technology. Lever, let's talk about some other areas, right? where this technology can be used and where, where you're seeing it being used. Right. Well, it's, you know, with the, uh, with the pandemic outbreak, we ended up, um, you know, basically pivoting as well, not just in providing the health screening, but then we just got a huge interest in, in demand from various verticals contacting us. So we ended up branching into what I call non-senior living. It's a it's a product line that that we have called safe check-in, but we have our system running now in many different um, non-senior living industry verticals. I would say from a probably from a focus standpoint, one of the biggest ones is industrial and manufacturing. Because, you know, these yeah. these producers, these manufacturers have got to get product out, but they can sometimes have thousands of employees that need to come in to manufacture the product. How can they how can they have them come in safely during yep. a pandemic? So, you know, our system has been used a lot in industrial and manufacturing, safe check in to provide health screening signing in. Then they start to realize the advantage. Oh, my gosh. Now I can actually if I'm a line manager. I've never know when that contractor is coming in to fix my printing press or whatever is broken. Now, because they sign in, I know they're health screened and I can get a text alert or an email alert, or they just signed in and this is where they're going and I can go meet them with a change order. They're starting to realize the value of visitor management as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, you know, another big area is what's called post-acute care. We've installed in a lot of hospitals and doctor's offices and rehab clinics and things like that, where they're health conscious because you're mm -hmm. coming in for care. Um, but you, as you said, there, there are other areas, university, academic settings, 
another big growth area for us where uh, whether it's uh, K through 12 school programs or whether it's university programs, um, they have to find a way to manage, you know, that uh, the staff that comes in that now as classes are reopening, it can be safe. And do you health screen students coming into class? And so there are a lot of industries that are concerned about this. Whole, wholeheartedly agree. And, th- and there's opportunity there, right? I mean, just knowing the technology, understanding how it can be applied, uh, and then, you know, you probably have it in your customer base. Hey, Lever, can I throw you a couple curveballs? I know we didn't talk about this here real quick, but, I, but I've got my reseller hat on, and, you know, I know a lot of them have programmers on site. Uh, with AccuShield, do you guys have APIs or SDKs that, you know, that connect to other things? Talk to us a little bit about that, uh, about how they can work with you we as a do. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and literally we work with distributors, we work with resellers. Um, but one of the most important things that we feel, uh, has been important to evolve and develop in are integrations. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I use one example of what's called access control. I mean, we work closely with a company that, um, because we have open APIs, that people can, we can make, you know, basically you can develop an integration to, or we can push out of. Uh, it's not hard to find something like an access control company and say, all right, now, if you want, once you've successfully signed in, it can unlock the door. Mm-hmm. And uh, otherwise you can't get in unless you've successfully signed in, which is defined as past health clearance. Uh, and then there are so many advancements in that technology. For example, company we work with, they have a head end unit that you don't have to put in their hardware. They can literally retrofit to just about every type of door lock hardware, their system, so that now at a much lower cost, someone signs in, it unlocks the door. Here are the ways that you correct or notify people if you didn't move fast enough and get in. You know, just like just like your, you know, day-to-day normal situation when a door is unlocked for you through a buzzer. You have yep. to have methods to be able to fix it if you miss the door. Easy to do now. Um, so integrations are very important. Uh, integrations, we have them with HR management programs. We have them with clinical programs where uh, somebody doesn't want to keep on having to go to three, five, 10 different programs to get an answer. They'd Mm -hmm. like it all to be automated into a single program. There you go. Yep. Making it even easier for, for them. And, and, and real quickly, right? Cause I know uh, it sounds like one of the partners, one of the hardware companies that you've been working with a lot, ELO, uh, you know, is brought to you a good partner of yours. We, we share a common bond there in, in a company that I previously used to work for. ELO was the, was the connecting dot to blue star. We started buying touchscreen monitors as well, uh, from that okay. company. So I know that you guys do that. And anyway, they've got a whole robust solution yeah. that as relates to that, uh, that you can get, you can purchase. Yeah. Through Blue Star, by the way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug. As if you didn't know. <laughs> Well, this has been a a great conversation. I feel like there's uh, a lot of cool stuff about visitor management, in particular with senior living, but definitely beyond. I I love a technology that has a a very good specific use that we can talk about, but also one that, like you mentioned, our our audience can listen to and say, hey, there's applications here elsewhere. So, you know, if you you want to learn more about that, uh, visit AccuShield.com. That's A-C-C-U-S-H-I-E-L-D.com. You can learn about safe check-in there as well, the, you know, the application that's beyond senior living. Living, so definitely go check that out. Um, our, our ELO team, sorry, well, you know, yeah, you know, our ELO team is yes. really good, uh, well in bed with uh, AccuShield, and they would know a lot about it too. Yes, so anyway, yeah. definitely, they recommended mm-hmm. Deliver and, and AccuShield to us actually for this podcast. So yep. we appreciate that. And that reminds me also, I want to thank our uh, Tech Connect sponsors. That is Elo, Epson, Honeywell, and Zebra. We couldn't do this show without you. We mm-hmm. obviously appreciate your support. Uh, listen, if you want to uh, talk to us, tell us a little bit about you know your feelings on senior living technology, maybe ask a question that we could relay over to our Elo team or to Lever. Uh, first of all, you can leave us a review, a five-star rating and review are on Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you leave a great review there, we might read some of them on air. We might Absolutely. answer a question if you have one there. The challenge is still out there, the right? The challenge is still out there, yes. Yeah. You know, I, I know people are listening. I know people like this show. I see the numbers. <laughs> so it's time to go give us that review. Come there on, it go. doesn't right. take that long. Just you know, hit that little five-star button, type in a little review, even if it's just, hey, great job, guys. We need the, uh, the validation. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but you can also reach out to us on Twitter, at TechConnectPod, or email us, techconnect at bluestarinc.com. 
All right, let's wrap up with the uh, the usual segments that uh, kind of ties everything together. First mm-hmm. of all, the value of the VAR. Yep. And I kind of feel like we've really touched on a lot of value of the VAR already. I think we have today. Yeah. But let's let's you know let's let's package it up. Let's all compress right. it a little. Fair uh, enough. And and you know make a very succinct takeaway for our audience. Mm-hmm. So Weaver, my question is, you know, our customers, you know, our bars may have a lot of customers that. Are thinking about it, or, or or maybe they're trying to approach them about implementing some kind of screening technology, and maybe they think, oh, it's not really a big deal. We've already, we know what we're doing at this point. We've already figured it out. You know, the pandemic's been going on for about a year now. We've already got this sorted out. But how would you approach them about, hey, this isn't just about the pandemic. This is about some long term value there. And again, I know we've touched on this, but give us the you know the the short pitch for you know AccuShield and safe check in for the long term. Yeah, it's I I definitely think that the pandemic has led people to realize more the value of uh, getting your arms around people coming into your facility, whether it's senior living, whether it's any other type of facility. It's digital visitor management, sign in to visitor management. So um, I think that uh, VARs, distributors are at least what we're being told by the people that we're working with there is an increase, a dramatic increase due to the pandemic and people saying, we need a technology solution to handle controlling people coming in. And they're starting to realize more of the benefit outside of the pandemic, outside of just health screening, even if there's no more need to health screen. There is huge value that our customers are looking for. And you provide, you AccuShield through Safe Check-In or AccuShield provide this solution um, we want to be able to sell it to our customers. And, you know, we've got lots of programs going in place for it. Um, quite frankly, I feel, you know, our attitude is that we've got a lot of, of presence in senior living. So, um, you know, we feel like in, in a large market share there, but especially outside of senior living, I would love to hear from people who are interested in our product because, we want to specialize in visitor management and health screening. Uh, we don't. We do not want to necessarily specialize in hundreds of different industries outside of senior living in terms of sales and marketing. So we're very focused. We want to work with distributors, value-added resellers. Come, let us show you what the product does, and we'd love. We have a nice program that you know can make money for you, and you know more about these industries than we do. Uh, and you have penetration into them. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think it's just, you know, as we've said before, it's just another way for our resellers to embrace additional technologies that they can bring to their customers. And in this case, really important in the senior living care. Uh, we've talked about how there's opportunity out there, opportunity in spend. You know, they're starting to see an increased amount of spend, opportunity in population. It's it's not going away. It's certainly, you know, as, as our population ages, the opportunity's there. So it's really just incumbent upon the reseller, I think, to understand the technology. We got, we got a good one here an AccuShield, a nice, robust solution that goes beyond just the temperature check. And yes, it can be used more in day two with the screening, with the forms that you can implement and stuff like that. There's applications and use for it even after this pandemic maybe subsides a a bit. So yeah, yeah, lots of good stuff there. And I think the only thing I would add is, and I kind of touched on this earlier, this idea of of competition and the idea of getting a leg up on competition. Mm -hmm. Again, our population is growing. It's growing older. Uh, it, it, the area where I live alone, there are at least three different senior facilities and centers that have either popped up in the yeah. last year or two, Con- or being, are being constructed. Built right Absolutely, now. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, there's so much opportunity there. And, and again, I feel like as you get further in the future, as when you get to out, when we get to retirement age, and mm-hmm. we, you know, our kids are thinking about where <laughs> where to stick us someday. Mm-hmm. You know, or, or where you know our our next life is going to be. I, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of competition between these different centers that's going to be based a lot around technology yeah. and integration and mm-hmm. how our, our children can keep can, you know keep check on us, as we've talked about, these idea yep. of being able to check in with us. So, again, when you're talking to your, your customers, that's the conversation you should be having is, hey, you know, whether you are ready to do this or not, your competition might be. I just, I just passed by a new facility being built 
you know, two, mm-hmm. three miles down the road. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're going to have no Wi-Fi and minimal amounts of technology <laughs> in the rooms? No. no. They're going to be on it, so you need to be on it, too, if you want to get ahead of that. Yeah, so absolutely. I think there's a, a strong value there is to to go out and talk technology and help them understand that, look, this is this is the future, It's and you need to be on board or get there, or you might not be open in 20 years. You yeah, know? right. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap well, up with – oh, go ahead. Sorry, Lever. And if I could just add one quick thing, touching on that, a good example of that, um, what uh, technology aggregators uh, are driving toward, they're hearing from their customers as specialists in an industry, we're hearing it in senior living, and that drives the technology forward. You know, we've released our mobile app. We're not the only ones, but it's important to have a mobile app so that you can faster sign in and it's totally touchless. So you're not touching any screens, which people worry about touching things. You can sign in, answer your questions, identify yourself. You walk up to the kiosk, get your temperature taken in a couple of seconds and you're done. Well, another advantage of that mobile app is we have within our system the capability, oh, this facility that I'm going in requires these two or three credentials. I can take a picture of my of my proof of vaccination. I can take a picture of my recent you know, COVID clearance or whatever it is and uh, automatically transmits, loads into the dashboard, facility can check and say, you're good to go. You're able to sign in. This is the, these are the kind of advancements that are critical, I think, in enhancing visitor management above and beyond just current pandemic. Yeah, I love it. I love that uh, the contactless aspect of everything is always one of my favorites. Uh, regardless of COVID, it was you know, not even a germ thing, but just a convenience thing. Yeah, you know, right. Being able to pull my phone out, do everything that needs to be done. And like you said, you could maybe just walk in and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. Like, all right, I've already got everything I need for you. You can go right on through. I love that. Fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. Well, let's wrap up with our favorite segment of every week, What's Tech Connecting With You? This is where we talk about a piece of technology and innovation, something going on in the world of science and tech that has caught our eye, maybe something we're playing with, something we're reading about. So, Weaver, I'll start with you. What's Tech Connecting With You right now? Um, well, I start maybe with a couple, but since we're talking about senior living, there is there is so much cool stuff happening in senior living that uh, I can think of a couple there. Um, you even mentioned briefly earlier, John, the concept of, you know, falls. Uh, falls are statistically the most crippling thing to happen to seniors. You can, you can be a senior and be incredibly healthy, but if you have a bad fall at that age, it, it's statistically, they say the recovery is incredibly hard. Mm-hmm. And so th- there's been so much advancement. Well, how is there a technological way to help people you know, fall prevention is what they call it, fall prevention. So it's unbelievable now how you have providers that can provide certain types of monitors, discrete, you know, they can be in your room, they can sit in the ceiling or in a lamp, they can be in other public places, but these monitors are able to read, you know, your gait and how you walk and move around. They can report if you're not getting up or moving at all. And then that allows them to predict where this person is becoming more susceptible to a fall risk and we need to implement new programs to help them. Uh, so it's, it's incredible what they call that fall management that's now not reactive. Oh, they fell. They got to hit a button. Oh, wait a minute. They can't even hit the button. Instead, we're being proactive and saying, you know, uh, this is where we can monitor and see that someone is becoming an increasing fall risk. They're becoming an increasing risk to fall, you know, maybe fall out of their bed at night because of shifting. Mm -hmm. Um, Cool stuff on that front. Um, Another one is easy use, and they're making them easier and easier. Uh, TVs. They now have special remotes, some providers in senior living who provide technology solutions so that it's incredibly easy for a senior to use this special remote on their TV screen to just hit buttons to do everything from, this is what I want to eat based on today's menu. Uh, I want to, there are the activities. I want to go to this activity. Oh, this is the reminder that I have this doctor's appointment. Oh, this is exciting. I just got, you know, a message on my TV or my phone just rang that a visitor's up front to see me. So now I'm prepared for them to come. All of these things are, are pretty pretty cool and in increasing quality of life. 
Yeah, I like that, the increasing of the quality of life. Yeah. You know where I thought you were going there, Lever, in the beginning of your what's tech connecting with you. Have you seen these clothes that people can wear that have airbags in them? I think they're using them right now for <laughs> like like snowboarders and stuff right, like right. that. That yeah. if there there's like avalanche detection and and like if if it detects it, boom, all of a sudden they're in this like bubble. But I but I've seen I think it's skateboarders or something like that. There's there's like clothing out there that has airbags so that if you fall, boom, it, it like That's immediately awesome. inflates and stuff like that. So I see a world not only as Lever just described it where you've got technology kind right, of watching right. you, but clothing you know that that hey somewhat stylish, but it. it I want all of this stuff for my toddler. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, he survives and bounces He's a back rubber band. Much, Toddlers yeah. are rubber bands, but dude. But this, this kid, he's at this place right now where he just, just standing up can somehow find a way to fall down yeah. and bump into something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And most of the time, he's just like, whatever, gets back up. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of tears involved. But right. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> give me all the tech. Like, you want to talk about putting someone in a bubble, like, you know, like, just, just uh, Maybe on, I kid. shouldn't have opened the door for you here. <laughs> oh, man. I'll be one of those. Now, I guess it won't be like a helicopter parent. It'll be like a, I don't know, inflatable cushion parent or something. Or, yes, I'm right, sure, yes. You know? <laughs> something to that effect. Well, speaking uh, of kids, what's tech connecting with me? You're a gamer, right? Uh, somewhat. Are you gaming with Miles yet at all or no? We, we're playing like old school Nintendo and Super Nintendo. And uh. he's not really playing yet. He just... He thinks he's playing while I'm playing. Like yeah. I'll play like Street Fighter or something. And he's oh. like, "Oh, I beat you!" Oh, I see. Yeah, you yeah. Did okay. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's an app out there called Roblox. You, you're, you're, have you heard uh, of this yet? I have not. Okay, you haven't gotten into this ecosystem yet. But so it's an app. It's just a gaming app that a lot of. Okay, my daughter's nine, so a lot of nine year olds in that area are playing the heck out of this uh-huh. thing. And what's cool about it is you you get an avatar, of course. You know, you you create a persona, but then you can go into ver- a variety of games. So they've got you know whatever you, you can name the name the game they can you can kind of go into that world and one of the ones that you play in is like this this island world where you have an island and you build it up and you get money and stuff like that but it's all it, what i like about it is it's fun you can play with your kid so i have got my avatar i'm on my phone mm-hmm. you know she's on whatever her ipad and and we're all you know in the world building things and stuff like that but it's really family friendly i mean there's they've, they've really taken an eye on the whole they understand what the parents issues with dealing right, with these right. apps so like all the clothing's appropriate there's a chat filter that that monitors what people are saying on the chat and filters right, out bad right. words and, and all this kind of good stuff so i kind of like that angle of it so roblox if you haven't heard of it you you know, cool. you will. You'll you'll yeah. be there very eventually. I don't think you can do like slaying and stuff like that with it. But no. or, <laughs> well, my actually, it's funny because I, I didn't think about this because my son refers to it as his game. But he got a fire tablet for Christmas mm-hmm. from the in laws, and I wasn't entirely sure if he was ready for a tablet because I tried him out on a like an old iPad a couple mm-hmm. times and he struggled with it. But he has picked it up really fast. And there's a lot of cool little just just very simplistic games on it, and it's the kids' version. So ah, like there's there minimal go. that he can get into. Like it's already pre set up where you know I can pick like what age and what age group I want him to have content for. Mm-hmm. I can determine how long he's allowed to be on and all that stuff. But there's a lot of just fun little game, simple stuff like matching, you know, card matching and putting together puzzles and stuff that he will just, just is quickly glommed onto and figured out how to use. And it, it blows my mind because I think I can't imagine having something like this when I was his age. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait but, until you have that first moment where he knows more about this oh, device sure. than you do. Or I, I'm sure that's only probably about two or three years down probably. the road for Or you. then when we start gaming too, like I know he's going to want like the latest and greatest system and it's going to be so far over my head. It'll right. Maybe VR or something. I'll be, oh yeah. I'll yeah, be yeah, the one yeah, following yeah. all, falling all over the place. Fully immersed. And, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he'll be just kicking my butt all the time. So, <laughs> Because I can enjoy it while I can. Yeah, Absolutely. So. You should. You need to. That's yeah. right. So All what's right. tech connecting with you? So mine is an article yeah. I came across that says, Physi- physicists built an anti-laser to charge your phone from across a room. Wait, wait, wait. An anti-laser? Anti-laser. Okay. So, I'm so read, how's this thing I'm going to read this briefly here. It says, the idea is simple. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It simple. sounds simple coming out of the gate, right? Just like a laser emits yeah. light particles or photons one after the one after another in a neat and orderly row, an anti-laser sucks up photons one after another in reverse order. Researchers have long speculated that a device like this might make wires and charging cables a thing of the past, allowing people to beam energy invisibly across a room to a laptop or phone and power it without plugging in. But through basic anti, but though basic anti lasers have lasers have been tested before, the real world isn't as neat and orderly as a laser pointed at a fixed receiver in a, in a laboratory. Electronics move around, objects get in the way, walls reflect energy in unexpected ways. 
The new technology demonstrated in this experiment accounts for that as it receives scattered energy beamed around a space in an unpredictable pattern, still receiving 99.996% of the sent power. What? Yeah, I I, what? I didn't dive too far into like the actual science behind all this. <laughs> so but fascinating. So, yeah, I don't need to. It, I'm just it receives power just kind of. I, mean, I thought wireless around. charging was pretty cool, but you know, I guess you know, like if you don't want to have to actually set your phone down for any. Wow. Reason, you yeah. Know, you so we're just, we're transmitting energy. Just energy. Anti lasers. Which, to be fair, I've kind of heard that as like the potential future of wireless charging like legit wireless as in Mm -hmm. you don't even need to set it anywhere where there's any kind of pad that's plugged in or anything either so yeah sounds like we're we're getting getting a little closer to that okay but you still have to be in a room or something i don't know like i I, it's one of those things i look at i'm like this this sounds cool but also sounds a little weird of just all this energy just (sighs) bouncing around like yeah now i gotta read up on this not that there's not like let's be honest we're sitting in a studio where there's tons of different types of energy just beaming through our bodies sure. at all times. Right. So yeah. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I guess that's no different than that. No so. different than that. But hey, if my if my phone stays constantly charged. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, it'd be really cool if they could get it out of these four walls and now your car is constantly charged and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we'll that'd get be there. kind of that'd be kind of fun. Be able to park in a lot and right? just say, Oh yeah, my car's gonna charge while yep. it's sitting here. Yeah. Yeah, don't there need to plug it in. Chargers within a quarter of a mile that can beam the energy. Yep, in. I like it. I like it. I, I want it, and I want it now. Let's go. <laughs> Look, we're you know we've we've talked about Star Wars quite a bit on the show before. Uh, you know, I don't know how far off we not we are far off, but the world of like Coruscant in Star mm-hmm. Wars, the big planet that's basically just one giant city mm-hmm. and all all things technology. Yeah. Like I sometimes you look at that and go, that's that, you know, that may be a future we're eventually heading yeah. towards. Yeah. Where it's just yeah. constant technology just all around us at all times. Not so outlandish. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Lever, uh, thank you so much yes, for being here. Thank you, Lever. Today. We appreciate your time and, and jumping on with us. Well, thank you for having me. It was fun. Thanks. Definitely. Well, listen, everybody, uh, if you know somebody uh, who is elderly, give them a call today. Right. They probably are looking to hear from somebody. Yeah, right there now. you so, go. I yep. think that's something nice you can do. So thank you so much. And until next time, stay connected. Enhance patient care everywhere it matters. Elo offers touchscreen product solutions for a variety of healthcare applications, ranging from nurse stations and patient education to patient check-in and pharmacy checkout. Streamline healthcare administration and enhance the patient experience with ELO's versatile solutions. To learn more, visit ELO's microsite on bluestarinc.com or contact your Blue Star account manager. Healthcare budgets are tight, but quality technology is a must. Help your customers on both fronts with Zebra's TC21 and TC26 healthcare mobile computers, the ultimate cost-effective devices, providing all the features non-clinical healthcare workers need to communicate, document, and stay connected from anywhere on campus or beyond. Choose from Wi-Fi only or cellular options with Zebra's leading voice solutions and mobility DNA tools to deploy healthcare ready five inch display devices with easily removed batteries and a wide selection of potential accessories. To learn more and find plenty of helpful sales tools, check out the show notes or contact the Blue Star Zebra team.